Good morning, everybody. And we are here with our 10 o'clock show with the really intriguing Katie Moriarty. Katie, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. That's okay. It would be, be terrible if I went, oh, what are you doing here? You know when people say to you, can I use your toilet, and you just want to go, no, yeah. you can't. <laughs> so let's not mess with people's heads. So K Katie and I, like, I wish you guys could join us for our pre-show chats because they're always really interesting. So mm -hmm. we've, we've said everything we want to say now. We're just going to sit here and drink tea and look at you, aren't we, Katie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what I found really interesting about reading your story was that you have gone from a corporate career where you're really successful, doing really well about five years ago, and then you went, you know what, I'm going to leave and I'm going to become a quantum healer. So yeah. what was the process of, like, coming to that realisation? Because, you know, as I said to you, it's not like you sat in front of your career guidance counsellor and went, uh, doctor, lawyer, accountant, quantum healer. You know, this is not on the list of jobs that we typically apply for. Totally. Um, yeah, it wasn't even, I think, like, this, I'd been working in corporate for 13 years and I had quite a successful career from quite a young age. And um, so a big part of me was attached to all the time that I'd invested into the job that I was doing. I was selling real estate. And uh, I feel like a lot of us sometimes have a bit of a nudge that maybe there's something else we're meant to be doing and we're not, you know, really fulfilled with, with what we're doing um, and that there might be another purpose for our soul if that makes sense. And I had that feeling for a very long time. I always felt like, although I liked my career and it, you know, was fulfilling in multiple ways, it wasn't what I was really meant to be doing with my life. And um, so I got to a point where I was quite frustrated because I was working in inner city Sydney in real estate. It was super busy and, um, you know, it's a really competitive market. And I was just, my time was sort of consumed with my job, but outside of that, I was constantly asking the question, like, what am I meant to do? What am I meant to do? And I'd always had this feeling that going traveling on my own for a year was something I was meant to, meant to embark on. Um, and it just got to a point where I was walking around the park one day and I was like, listen, I can't live like this anymore. So if you show me what it is that you want me to do, I'll do it. Like, I don't care how weird, I don't care how difficult I'll do it I'm sick of this and so anyway I like sort of received the message you have to quit your job like this clinging to this job that you know you don't want to be doing anymore you're not going to get the rest of the information unless you make the decision so I was like okay fine I'll play this game so I ended up um I went to India for a month on my own in December January of that was going on one before and um that was really eye-opening for me and really like a bit of a taste of what this travel life would look like and that I could do it on my own if I was to make the leap so I came back from that and I did quit my job and I booked a one-way ticket to Paris because I was going to fly over to Europe I was going to do the Camino Santiago trail that 30 I'm trying to remember it's about a 30-day trek um it's from, long yeah, from the French Pyrenees down to the coast of Spain. So I booked all that in, everything was ready to go, and I'd packed up all my stuff and sold it. And about 10 days before I was set to leave to fly to Europe, this certification popped up for this quantum healing thing in Costa Rica. And I saw it on my social media. And it was just one of these moments of like, every part of my being was like you have to go to that and it was the same date as I was meant to be in in flying into Paris and I was like I can't go I've already booked and paid for all this stuff and like this is crazy Costa Rica is Costa Rica is not easy to get to from Australia like I think there's like three or four flights and it's like a very long you, you almost have to sell your kidney to pay for your flight to get into Costa Rica <laughs> really expensive <laughs> It's very expensive and everything was already paid. So I was sort of like battling with my ego being like, oh, I don't know if I, if I should. And literally even everyone in my life, like my sister is my best friend and is always super supportive of my my things, my plans. And she was like, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, the only way I can describe this is my soul will never forgive me if I don't go to Costa Rica. So I'm going. So um, 
So I did. I changed my plans and I booked the trip and I flew over to Costa Rica and went out into the middle of the jungle with 40 people that I didn't know from all over the world to do this do this certification. And before that, that I mean, I had no intentions of being a healer, um, but I just felt really like I've got to go and do the thing. So I did. Yeah, like the, the polar differences between real estate, which is seen as pretty cutthroat, salesy, competitive, um, you know, sometimes sleazy because, you know, they, I think they're just above car salesmen and journalists in terms of trustworthy factor to to healer. Like, so what you're saying is that you actually listen to your gut. I did. Oh, my yeah, God. That, that, like, what? I'm glad. How? And, and in the work that you do, I know that you work mainly with women and, and mm -hmm. helping them with their healing and moving on. <clears throat> How rare is it for us to listen to our gut? You know, like, we get those signs all the time, but most of us ignore them. Totally. I think um, it's so rare and I think like this is not the path for everyone. Like the way that I did this was an extreme version of us like listening to the callings of our soul and our gut instincts and our intuition. But I feel um, from all the work that I've done since, almost every woman I speak to has this like burning desire for some kind of like purpose or creativity or to be fully in her own essence or to be fully seen or heard in her own expression. Yet we are literally firstly conditioned to not feel safe to be that and do that and follow our dreams and um also yeah most people are are full of doubt and fears that if I do this will it work and I think the biggest thing that stops people from doing what they really want to do is trying to understand how and work out all the steps before they make the decision whereas like as I say from my own personal experience and there's been many examples of it since even that time that I left um, for Costa Rica Oftentimes when the soul says do this, if you just say yes, the way appears and it's so against our human nature to be able to be comfortable leaning into that uncertainty. Mm. But it isn't that part of our human nature and the way that we have set up and we lived our lives now totally in contradiction to what is essentially how we should be going with the flow with life? Yeah. That's something that one of my friends says to me all the time, that like watching the way that I flow with the rhythm of my own life is, um, I guess, something that's so so not what we're used to doing. But actually when you, when you embody that, it's really beautiful. Like I'm, I find for me personally I'm always supported, the abundance shows up, like the clients show up, everything, all of the things show up, all of the support comes into my space, but it is like full blown trust and surrender for me. Like from that first um, time, that commitment that I was like, okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do every single time something's popped up. I've said yes to, to what I feel I need to do and worked out the, the rest of the details later. And it's served me very well so far. I, I love that flow with the rhythm of your life because yeah. it seems to me that as human beings that we spend so much of our time and energy and effort in fighting going with the rhythm of our life like you said because we've got these preconceived ideas of of how men and women should show up and and what we should do and as you were talking it made me think of um that like when you you've said that you'll get married to somebody and you're standing there at the altar and you've gone, your whole gut's going, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, but I've paid for the wedding, I've paid for the reception. What will people think? Do you think that that thinking about what people think is a, a really big barrier to following the rhythm of your life? Yeah, well, I actually did that. That was my experience. I did get married, um, like, a few years before this to someone that was totally the wrong person, and I knew that and went against my intuition and eight months later actually separated from them and made the decision that I could admit that, okay, this has been the wrong decision for me. Um, and so I guess falling into that trap for me was a massive part of why I decided to not do that anymore. Um, 
And it is exactly like that. And I think the thing that stops so many people is the fear of what other people will think. No one wants to be criticized or judged or weird. Like when I made this monumental radical decision to, I was like, if I'm going to do this and switch this career and be the quantum healer, like I do the certification and, and whatever, I'm going to go fully into that. Like no, no, um, consideration to what people will think or say and I know there'll be backlash and I know people will question whether I went mad in the jungle in Costa Rica or like what happened to me but this is my truth and I'm going to fully back it and honor it and what I found was of course there was a time of recalibration for the people in my life that knew me before um but everyone kind of like you're you are the evidence of your own choices. And so now, like when I came home from traveling, everyone in my life was like, my gosh, you're like a different person. You look so radiant and so happy. And they're like, hang on a second, maybe there really is something in this whole thing of like following your soul. And um, maybe she's actually got the right idea. So I think fear of what other people think is literally the thing that holds so many of us back. And yet, every single person's looking around at each other being like will people think i'm weird if i do this or will people think that this is strange um or will people criticize me if i fail and i don't make it and uh everyone has that fear is there a point when you you're you're getting into that rhythm of your life where you know if we're looking at scales and it's like here's my current life i'm unhappy things aren't going as planned but you know look it pays well and you know i'm, I'm okay like, I'm okay, I'm getting by. And then there's your, your, as you say, your soul's calling, your gut's telling you that it's wrong and that you need to go and do what makes you happy. When, is there a time for all of us when one side gets heavier than the other where we, we make a, a move into that? I feel like that's the thing. So many people wait for the point where it's so painful that they can no longer stand it to make a change. And for some people, I'm sure there's a path in life but like a timeline that's available that if they stay in the comfort zone, they just continue in the comfort zone for their whole life and they may not go through astronomical challenges um, to push them into what it is that they really want to do. But for me, like that absolutely did happen. So when I was speaking before about the, the like I got, I got married, I had a terrible relationship breakdown. It was honestly the most soul destroying thing in my in my life. I also got adrenal fatigue. So I was in that space working in real estate doing really quite well for someone for for like a young female agent of my age and the money was good and I was like I kind of want to break away from this but I'm so comfortable that I'm scared to do it and like what if it doesn't I don't even know what I would do what if it doesn't work out and just that I committed and worked so hard for where I got to I was clinging to it I didn't want to walk away from that because it made me feel like well that was all for nothing or um like I wasted my time and energy and and so I believe that for me, this was the path I needed to go on. So what had to happen in order for me to make some changes is it had to get really, really hard. And so I got the adrenal fatigue. I couldn't get out of bed for three months. It took me almost 18 months to recover. Met the guy, married the wrong person. That was all pretty, you know, it was just, it was just the dark night of the soul. It was like the worst time in my life. And that's when I packed up my bags and moved to Sydney and, I was still working in real estate, but very much looking, that's when really I was like, okay, I'm open to exploring whatever's available to me, but I just kind of need some guidance on what it is that I'm meant to be doing. It reminds me of a story I heard once about a dog and a nail. Have you heard that story where there's a dog sitting on the porch and, you know, the, the owner's sitting there and, you know, just rocking on his rocking chair and the dog's going, and then his neighbour walks past and he goes, you know, mate, what's wrong with your dog? And he's like going, oh, he's sitting on a nail. And the neighbour says, well, why doesn't he move? And the owner says, I guess it's not sharp enough. So there's so many of us sitting on nails that just make us feel, you know, like you're kind of like going, oh, I'm going to shift my bar, maybe that won't hurt so much. But we don't take that ultimate step to go, Okay, I need to change. Totally. And, um, you know, with the work that I do, I mean, one of the things is that as humans, we are programmed, you know, like our ego and our mind want to keep us safe and in what's known, even if what's known isn't necessarily the best option for us, even if what's known isn't what we really desire for our life, 
it feels safe and it feels comfortable. So so often when people go to do something different, the mind and the ego will go into overdrive, like showing all of the variables of what could go wrong and what won't work. And so we spend our time focused on like what the potential risks are as opposed to being able to see the potential like best possible outcome for us. And I feel like that is another thing that just keeps us like we are um, – we're conditioned to want to be want to be safe it's a survival mechanism so it plays its own role which is why stepping outside of that is so scary um but if if you do it right what's on the other side is so so magnificent like i wouldn't amazing it sometimes it makes me think and i look at the human race and i go how did we how could how do we build all of this amazingness and yet still be so personally dopey totally right it's so (laughs) Like very capable, very creative, very like amazing, intelligent beings that then just want to stay in the stay in this little box that we've created for ourselves. Yeah, I, and I'm pointing the finger right back at me, so I'm not saying anything that I wouldn't say to myself. <laughs> it's because you're saying that, and I'm like going, oh, <laughs> "I've done that. Oh, I've done that as well." Oh, actually, I'm currently doing that. So it's like, wake up, wake up. I, I'd, I'd love to know, you know I mean, like I was reading your bio and it says, you know, Katie Moriarty is an intuitive guide and a quantum healer. Mm-hmm. What does that really mean? Yeah. Like for those of you who go, wow, that sounds like really, oh, that sounds really woo-woo and a bit out there and a bit strange. How Can you explain it practically for us? Yeah, it is very woo-woo and it's very out there and um, it is, I do work in the mystical realms of all of this. So um, intuitive guidance and healing for me, quantum healing, like everyone has their own energetic field. We have, um, everyone's got their own wounds and their own patterns and their own like templating in their field is the best way I can describe it. And so for me, the work that I do um, is sort of a mix of guidance or coaching as well as like the healing aspect so it's very intuitive um I never knew like I always knew I had very good intuition um which probably really served me in my career as well uh having the ability to be able to connect with people on a deeper level after I did the certification um when I I when I had my first uh paying client what happened was I asked for information and guidance that would serve this person best and all of a sudden this flood of information channeled through me about events in their life and where pain was stored in their body and things that needed to be cleared and all that sort of stuff. So in terms of how I work, it's channeling. It's like it does, it's like I'm a, a, a like a vessel for this information to come through for me to help assist people along their healing path. And so generally... Um, Quantum healing is like in a child healing or it's tapping into someone's soul blueprint and seeing like how we can remove some distortion and like what we're speaking about, these fears and things. They're oftentimes their memories or, or beliefs that are trapped in multiple layers of our bodies. Like our physical body holds trauma as does our emotional and mental and energetic bodies. So we're multidimensional, multilayered beings. Um, and so being able to kind of channel for people and clear those patterns of distortion and then you know channel for them maybe like the women that I work with it's like okay I can channel their business blueprint that's something that I am able to do as part of the work that I do so it's just tapping into their gifts their talents their unique soul's essence and like what would serve them best how they can show up you know and like make their natural essence and who they are and what they love an actual a business can anybody tap into that like is it is it there like you know the the powerpoint in my wall that I can just go you know what I'm open to this plug oh my god and and I see the world differently I totally believe that there's different levels in which people can do this and like that I have friends that are healers that have different abilities to the way that I receive information and they're like equally amazing and everyone has their own way of doing things but I do believe that we all and I tell my clients all the time like I do believe that we all have the ability to tap into our own intuition into our own higher self to channel this information it does take work there's a lot of distortion that has to be removed in order for you to have a clear channel but I like to empower my clients to know that they have the ability to do this for themselves like it's just that they may need someone to show them how to how to show them the way initially so for you, why is why is women the 
do you think it's because we need the most help or because we're more open to the type <laughs> of healing that you deliver? So I initially started working with men and women and I had no preconceived notions about working with women specifically. It's just that um, about six or eight months ago, I got an actual like download from Spirit that was like, now your thing is to help women exactly through the journey that you've been through. You'll help them like heal themselves from a really feminine perspective because, um, you know, collectively there's a lot of wounding in the feminine collective that we are healing and transmuting at this point in history and it's like lifetimes worth of stuff like fear of persecution, fear of being seen, fear of using our voice. Um, and I went through that journey. Like I had a really tortured relationship with my mum as a little girl and that just went, stayed with me my whole life and that impacted all of my relationships with women. It impacted my self-worth and I've had to do a huge amount of healing myself to kind of come back to my own essence, my own radiance, my own self-worth. And so like the the what I received was it was very important for me to take my focus to women and help them shift their own wounds and all this feminine wounding so that they can embody you know the highest version of them and radiate their essence because when a woman does that healing work that affects everyone around her her family the generations before the generations to come it's the same as what men do as well but you know where women are here like we're amazing magnetic beings that are here to create life and amplify things and um, what in whatever way that is, whether it's through having kids or creating a business or being an artist or, you know, speaking our voice or our, our um, play and our dance and our movement, like whatever it is, we've all got something that is our, our thing. And so when we do this work, it really does radiate and the ripple effect goes out to so many more people than just ourselves. Do you think, like, women, you know, we... we and I so hear what you're saying about, you know, that generational pain and, you know, all of the things that we, we're still overcoming. Now, I've got a, a teenage son who is very anti-feminist and we're not talking about feminism here, but, you know, he sees women saying these things and he's like going, that's, that's like, what, what do you know, you're like 19 years old. Mm -hmm. But are we now setting up men for this generational healing that they're going to need to go through? Because while women are stepping into their power, men seem to be getting left behind. Yeah, so um, it is like factually women are far more willing to invest in their own personal development or their own healing just like um, that's sort of more than norm is that women are more willing to do this work. That's shifting though. I have some amazing male healer friends and I know a lot of men that are doing a lot of deep healing work on behalf of the masculine. And the thing about it is we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. So the perfect state for any human being or the best possible state is to have your own harmony between those energies. And so part of the work that I do is that when we do the feminine um wounding when we do the feminine wounding work and we like shift back some of this stuff if our masculine isn't healed within us we can feel very when we remove the layers like and I had this experience myself we feel very vulnerable and exposed because that part of us isn't there to support us when we come into our feminine essence so it's important that everybody does the healing work that it's not more important that women do it or men do it the men need their own healing because of the same thing generations of being told not to share their emotions and not to be a baby not to cry like they're not allowed to express themselves i think it's equally as important um in order for us to rebalance this on a societal humanity level um it's just for me not the work that i'm doing but i'm connected with some amazing men who are doing very important things in that space and it's it's equally important for both 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 of us to do the work Beautiful. I've got yeah. a, a question, question from the audience. Naomi, who Naomi has uh, got its Cool to Be Kind project, um, which is all about, you know, reminding people that we should be kind to each other. Um, she said, lots of questions, situations, experience come clouded in preconceived idea attachments. Are there ways you suggest for releasing them? Mm hmm yeah, so this is a process because, um, like, the healing work that we do is pretty deep. Like, it is, we do have filters over, like, the way that I see a situation is based on my filter and the way that you see it is based on your filter and that can be 
when I talk about generational stuff, like that can be stuff that's been handed down and handed down and handed down. And not only do we carry it in our DNA from the generations before, but also our experience from the time that we're born teaches us certain things. So the only way really to unravel all these patterns is to do the healing work in whatever resonates with you. Like whoever you choose to work with, it just has to resonate with you. You might work with a kinesiologist. You may work with someone like myself. You may work with, you know, I started in Reiki and that's where I, I first started doing my healing work. And it's only when we start to peel back the distortions, you can do it, like I said, on multiple levels. You can work purely with the mind and there's heaps of mindset stuff that's available. Um, for me, what helped me was doing the energetic work, which was so much more powerful. But I, I think this is where full discernment with your truth comes in. There's oftentimes things that we believe and it's just radically being open to questioning everything you believe all of the time. Like if you can, and so often the ego wants to cling to the belief. So it really does take someone who's willing to like be very um, brave and courageous and go, I'm willing to question my whole reality, everything I believe and everything I've been taught to find the truth with, within it. And I think what's happened collectively with, you know, this whole um, situation globally with the virus is just that everyone's reality was suddenly destabilised and everyone had to question the structures that their reality has been built on. And that is sort of like an ego death that you go through when you do the healing and you look at parts of your life and you're like, maybe what I've always carried or always believed or always lived for isn't really my truth. Can you see, like, I imagine, like, you know, we've most of us have been in some type of isolation, like particularly in Australia. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for overseas for two months. Um you know, I haven't really seen any other people except for maybe the, the person at the checkout at Woolies when I've gone to buy some groceries. Well, how do you see us coming out of this? Are you you hearing from this is lots of questions at once, but are you hearing from people who are in isolation who are going through that process that you talked about where they're going, I just realised that I've built my life on a house of cards mm -hmm. and it wasn't serving me well. Yeah. When we were talking earlier about the push that we sometimes need for things to get so bad that we shake up our, our you know, we wake up basically, um, I feel collectively that's sort of what we're going through when I talk about the ego death. People are being shown, like I've spoken to heaps of people that are like, oh, my gosh, I'm actually really enjoying the way things are. I'm suddenly realising that <clears throat> that hustle and that grind for what? Like why was I doing that? Or like do I really need all the things that I thought that I needed? And so I think it's a really, like the way that I've seen this situation, um, I've viewed it as a beautiful forced pause in the collective. And I understand that for many people this is deeply affecting them, so I'm not taking away from any of those things. But it's a deep pause where we get to stop and have a moment of reflection on our life and be like, what is really serving me and what do I take with me out on the other side of this and what do I not? Um, and... For me personally, what I noticed is like the things I used to love doing, like I love going out for beautiful meals and like having a cocktail with a friend or whatever it is. And like that's part of my routine and I haven't missed that at all. That's not to say I wouldn't, you know, do it again when that opportunity is available, but it did get me to assess what do I really miss? I really miss connection with other people. I really miss like, you know, being able to hug my friends and um, see people and have those relationships and that's probably more important than anything else that I had focused my attention on previously. Okay, so I think we might see maybe a little bit more awakening yeah. as we emerge. It would be yeah. interesting to see how we then interact with each other really? physically. <laughs> it's kind of like, really? yeah, to me I'm like going, I've got to leave the house. I know. What? I've got to go, like I'm, I'm going up to see um, Hayley next week and it's like, oh, am I up to driving an hour? Mm -hmm, right. Home? I feel the same way. I've become very, I mean, I've got my little like haven, my little um, sanctuary that I live in and I'm like, I'm pretty comfortable with how things are. So it's going to take me a while to recalibrate and reintegrate back into normal life when it happens. Oh, absolutely. Katie, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with me and with everybody who listened. 
Um, you've you've yeah. certainly given me a, a lot to think about. And, and thank you for bringing your style of healing from the woo-woo into the mainstream. I think it's really important that we're able to look at, at all the different ways that we can make our lives better. Totally. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a, been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.